part of taxonomy or this grouping of organisms based upon their similar traits is the assigning of a universally accepted scientific name. This process of assigning this two-part name is referred to as binomial nomenclature. And you can see how we can break these words down. So by meaning two, nomial meaning name, and then nomenclature naming system. So this is a two name naming system that is derived from the taxa in the classification of an organism. So the two parts of what's referred to as your scientific name are the genus and the species. <clears throat> When you're talking about the genus and the species, uh, there are some rules to follow as you are writing them. Uh, the genus is always to be capitalized and the species is to be lowercase. If you're typing them, as you see all of the examples on this slide, you are to put them in italics. If you're writing them, then you are to underline them. Now, one of the things that we'll see is that uh, sometimes you might hear the species referred to as the species descriptor. And a descriptor is just a way to describe the organism, to provide a description of that organism in the scientific name. And usually we're dealing with Latin terms here. So again, it's a universally accepted name. So no matter where in the world we go, uh, this scientific name can be used to represent this organism. Now, just kind of showing you the way that, <clears throat> sorry, that the scientific name works and the, and the scientific uh, species descriptor is we have two examples of the um, use of the word alba, uh, alba referring to white. So we have the Curcus alba, that is a white oak, and then the Taito alba, which is the barn owl, and we can see its face, how white it is. Uh, another example over here of organisms that um, <clears throat> are different organisms, but they have the same species descriptor, uh, which this one kind of seems a little bit negative there. Uh, it's vulgaris. Now, when it comes to the genus and species, um, some other rules to kind of look at. Um, you can write the genus by itself. Uh, the genus can be standalone. And the example I put here to kind of describe this to you is that we could be talking about a genus of bacteria known as Clostridium. So I can refer to Clostridium just by itself. And there's four different species of bacteria that fall under this same genus of Clostridium. So we have Clostridium perifragines, uh, Clostridium tetani, Clostridium botulinum, and Clostridium difficile. So all of those <clears throat> fall under the genus of Clostridium. Now, one thing, and I'm going to go back to the previous slide, is that we want to avoid writing the species by itself because it cannot stand alone because the species name, again, is probably going to be descriptive, somehow descriptive of the organism itself. And we could see with this tree and with this owl that we use the same species descriptor for white. Um, so we couldn't just write alba because uh, just looking at this example, we could be talking about a tree or we could be talking about uh, an owl. Same thing with the vulgares. If we wrote uh, just vulgares, we could be talking about a uh, root or we could be talking about uh, a newt or maybe even a squirrel. So you definitely do not want to <clears throat> write the species by itself. And then there's some other examples here. If you just want to take a look around, um, here we see uh, the genus of Felis. Uh, so Felis paradalis is an ocelot, and a Felis domesticate is a domesticated cat, a house cat. So we look at these two organisms. They are of the same genus, but they're of a different species. And the significance of the word species and that group of organisms known as a species is that they can successfully reproduce. So the definition for species, um, it's all about being able to reproduce 
sexually and for that to be successful, which means that their offspring will be able to grow up and have offspring of their own.